This video will provide an introduction to the molecular basis of pressure and how to convert between different pressure units. Additionally, it will introduce you to the relationship between pressure and other variables used to describe gas phase systems. Have you ever experienced your ears popping when you fly in a plane or drive up to a higher elevation? Well, the reason why this happens is because the pressure inside of your ear is greater than the pressure of the outside environment. What happens when your ears are popping is that they're equalizing the pressure so that either on either edge of this membrane, the pressure is equal. Formally, pressure is defined as a force per unit area. Specifically in the case of gas systems, this means the force that gas particles exert when they collide with the walls of their container. Pressure can be expressed using many different units, with the SI being the Pascal. The Pascal is related to other commonly reported units of pressure, including the atmosphere or ATM, the bar, the pounds per square inch, PSI, tor, and millimeters of mercury, among many others. You'll see in this table that it's common to use different units to report pressure in different areas of the world. For example, the pressure necessary to inflate car tires in America is most commonly reported in units of pounds per square inch, but you may see this pressure reported differently depending on where you are in the world. One of the units of pressure we'll use in this class is referred to as the atmosphere, ATM. The origin of this unit comes from measuring the mass of a column of air extending above the Earth's surface into the upper atmosphere. The force this column of air exerts on the Earth's surface is approximately 101,000 Pascal. This is an approximate value and is not constant. You should be familiar with this concept if you've seen maps that look like this. For example, a weather map with high and low pressure fronts that can be responsible for various weather patterns. It's useful to convert between different units of pressure. I recommend you pause the video at this point to work out these three practice problems. The first, 831 millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. The second, 8.1 times 10 to the fifth pascals to atmospheres. And the third, 155 millitor to pascals. Let's review these problems one by one. In the case of millimeters of mercury and ATM, we can tell from this conversion factor chart above that one ATM is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of the mer mercury go on the bottom so that units cancel, and when we divide 831 by 760, we get 1.09 atmospheres. This answer makes sense because 831 is on the same order of magnitude as 760, and so being just above one atmosphere is rational. Let's move on and look at Pascal to atmosphere. We know from the conversion factors that there are uh, 101,325 pascals per atmosphere. Calculating the value of 1.8 times 10 to the fifth pascals yields an answer of 1.8 atmospheres. Here's an example where we have an, a pressure given in millitor. You'll notice that millitor isn't stated on this conversion, um, this con series of conversion equalities. Now, millitor is a, is a version of the unit tor, specifically with the metric prefix milli. We can apply metric prefixes to any pressure units. So we know that there are a thousand millitor per one tor. To go from tor to pascal, we can then use the applied conversion factor. 760 tor is equal to 101,325 pascals. Con using the dimensional analysis, we get an answer of 20.7 atmospheres. Let's explore how changing other variables of a gaseous system impacts the pressure. Here are two containers of gas. Their volumes are different, but they're identical in every other way. Given that pressure is a measurement of the collisions between the gas particles and the walls of their container, what would you predict to be true of the pressure in the container with the lower volume? 
This relationship um, can be determined by considering that in this lower volume case, there are more collisions with the walls and therefore the pressure would be higher. We can express this as a proportionality, meaning pressure is inversely proportional to volume if everything else in the system is constant. This means that as the pressure increases, the volume will decrease. Similarly, as the volume decreases, the pressure will increase. We can express this mathematically as P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2, if all other variables in the system are constant. Here, one can be referred to as the initial pressure and volume conditions of the system, and two can be referred to some final set of conditions, pressure and volume. Here are two containers of gas with different temperatures. The um, Temperature on the left is lower than the right-hand container, but they're otherwise identical. Make a prediction. What happens to pressure as temperature increases? As temperature increases, we would expect there to be more collisions between the particles and the walls, therefore a higher pressure. We can express this as a proportionality also, that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. What this means is that if pressure increases, temperature would also be predicted to increase, assuming all other variables are constant. This can be expressed as P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, again where 1 are the initial conditions of the system, and 2 are some later final conditions. Let's look at the relationship between pressure and the amount of gas in the system. Here are two containers that have different numbers of gas particles but are otherwise identical. What would you predict would happen to pressure when increasing the amount of gas in the container? We would um, expect that the more gas molecules there are in the container, the more collisions with the walls and therefore the higher pressure. This can be summarized as a direct proportionality. More particles in the, con in the container lead to a greater pressure. Here we're measuring the number of particles using the moles of the sample, where we know from uh, earlier videos that mole, uh, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Here's the mathematical relationship P1 over N1 is equal to P2 over N2. Again, this implies that if the amount of particles in the container increases, the pressure would also increase. These relationships between pressure and other variables that describe gas phase systems can be summarized in the following way. As temperature increases, so does pressure. These are directly proportional. As the amount of gas in the container increases, so does pressure. <clears throat> Again, another direct proportionality. As volume in the, of the container increases, pressure decreases. This is an inverse proportionality. Importantly, when we're comparing pressure with another variable, we're assuming all other variables are held constant. Let's try a practice problem. Pause the video and attempt to work out this problem. Recall that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. This means that if as volume decreases, we would expect pressure to increase. That's exactly what's happening here. We have an initial volume of two liters and a final volume of one liter. We could call V1 two liters and V2 one liter. <clears throat> the initial pressure of the sample is one atmosphere. This would be P1. P2 would be what we're solving for here, the final pressure, once we compress the balloon. When we do the math, we would, or even just thinking about this conceptually, if we're decreasing the volume of the balloon by half, we would expect the pressure to double. This means the pressure would go from one atmosphere to two atmosphere, with the correct answer here being answer choice C. You may have experienced this if you've tried to compress a balloon between your hands before. Eventually, you reach a point where it's really challenging to continue to push the balloon and decrease the volume because what's happening is that the pressure of that balloon is increasing. 
If you push hard enough, the pressure inside the balloon will get so high that the um, that the balloon will pop and uh, release that pressure. You should now be familiar with the concept of pressure and its relationship to volume, temperature, and amount of particles in a sample of gas. Try out this bonus practice problem for some extra practice on this concept. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.